This is the D2 Incorporated JFWA1 Hydrolyte Demonstration Video. This box is the carrying case for the JFWA1 Hydrolyte. And I'm going to go ahead here and open it up. You can see that this case is a very robust case. It's fully waterproof when closed and it has an air pressure relief valve here. So if you put it on a plane and then land, you can actually open the case again. Inside the box, you can see we have the JFWA1 Hydrolyte, which on the back here, is powered by either a wall charger input which comes standard with the device or a standard mini uh, USB cable which we're going to power it with today. You can also output the data to any standard PC or laptop through this USB input output port. Just plug in the USB cable. I'm going to turn it around. There's only one button on the device which just turns it on and off so we're going to turn it on. You can see here it's reading D2 incorporated and then that's going to change to the 0.0, .0 parts per million. You have the calibration date, and then it's telling you the version of the software, and then the mode, which is A for ASTM. And always on the top line, it's 0.0, .0 parts per million, which is what it's currently reading. Inside the device is just the shuttle pad holder, which you can see here is hollow, and it just holds the shuttle pad. Now, to check the calibration of the device, which you do not have to do every time you use it, but you can do it whenever you like, use what comes with it which is our standard shuttle pad holder and this has two standards in it one is the low standard which is yellow on the other side is the green standard which is bright green and the green reads 39 with a plus or minus of three parts per million and the yellow reads 1.7 with a plus or minus of 0.3 parts per million and as long as you are within those standard deviations you know the hydrolyte is fully calibrated so now we're going to test it by putting the low side in so we should get 1.7, or at least within 0.3 of that. It takes about three seconds to take a measurement, and then you can see here 1.7 parts per million. Every time the screen flashes, it's taking another measurement. We flip it over, check the high side. It's going to take three seconds to take a measurement, and then we're going to get 39.7 parts per million which is only 0.7 over the 39 reading, which is well within the plus or minus 3 parts per million. So now we know that the device is fully calibrated, so we can go ahead and make a test pad. In order to make a test pad, according to ASTM D3240, we're going to use the sampling apparatus, which is the standard apparatus for running a test pad. To make one, you run 500 milliliters of fuel down into the apparatus, which is holding a test pad, any undissolved free water in the fuel will interact with the color of the pad changing the fluorazine dye and our device is going to read that change in the color so as you can see here we've already run this pad I'm going to take it out of the device and now we have to use tweezers because if there's any undissolved free water on our fingers it will change the color of the pad as well let me just take this we put it in the apparatus, the shuttle pad holder. Close that. That in our device. And then within three seconds, we're going to get a reading of 20.3. And that is our presentation for the JFW100. Thank you. I like my one before.